he needs to understand where does the government want to bring that country to. Yeah. Hey, so documenting something today. Let me just position the camera. I hope this works. I think it should work. Is it blocked? No, it's not. Okay, so the question. Yeah. So I have a friend who is a uh, cash rich. Uh. So he has a lot of float la, which uh. currently he's studying in Australia but he wants to know where he wants to put his money in a safe asset vehicle. Uh. which uh, often I, I recommend read right but uh. I don't know I don't know much what's the criteria for reads. Oh. So that so I can't tell him um much info. Okay. About like okay, so like you have to look out for these and these because he's going back on Sunday already. Then he was thinking uh some questions of reads that he want to consult me la, which in, in the case I want to ask you. Oh okay. So the first thing is uh about like what are the key some of the key key rate matrix you look for reads. Key matrix are actually yeah. Um so going from the I think it's always the because reads only got that kind of five, right? Five yeah. five, five categories of reads, right? Yeah. You got the commercial, okay. you got the mall. Okay. Commercial right? mall. Commercial mall, industrial, mm -hmm. hospitality. Commercial mall, industrial hospitality. Mm, industrial mm. hospitality and hospitals. Hospital. Healthcare. Okay. Right. So medical so, reads. Uh, uh, healthcare. Healthcare, okay. Right? Okay. Um next question is I'll ask him what is he familiar with? Uh, he's thinking of malls. Okay. It's more visible the tangible stuff that he walk in he can see. Okay. Like, uh, so malls. So so if he has malls in <coughs> his mind, right? Now the next question that probably he needs to consider is where you can we can go from two approaches uh, bottom up or top down. Mm -hmm. So if it's uh, normally I go from top down. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the government always oh, the only person that can does land or a location to build buildings or to build buildings, right? It's always right. the government. So it happened that <clears throat> if he wants to invest in any way, he needs to understand where does the government want to bring that country to. So mm -hmm. What does this mean? If he's investing in Singapore REITs, he has to understand where is Singapore government positioning Singapore. Mm -hmm. If he's buying a REIT in Hong Kong, he needs to know what the Hong Kong government is positioning Hong Kong for. Okay. Why is there this rationale? It's because there is limited land. Mm. It's just like you have five, uh, I have five children, right? Mm -hmm. I only got one uh I only got one packet of chicken rice. Mm -hmm. Either I can scarce share, resources. Yeah. yeah. So either I can share equally or because I know that certain uh a child has a better uh ROI. So then I'll allocate land differently because if I know I can get higher ROI on here, then I'll allocate more land for here. Ma. Mm -hmm. And this is where this is this coincides with where the government wants to position Singapore to be. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if he's going back to Australia and he wants to find an Australian read, then he needs to know where does, uh, where is uh, Australia positioning its own country to be at. Mm -hmm. That's from the top down. Because it uh, it determines the amount of land that can be allocated. Okay. Understood. Correct. Then, then from the bottom up. Okay, so if he's going for malls, then of course there'll be different malls with different, uh, with different, oh no, different reads that have different malls, right? So yep. there isn't really a comparison to say like, oh, okay, um, <coughs> which read is better apart from certain matrix. One, from the top line, because if you look at P and L, there's always the revenue minus the cost give you the, uh, give you the net profit margin, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So revenue. The only way more for REITs is just that oh, for more REITs, I need to carve out more spaces mm -hmm. within because 
the uh, the net letable area in the read is there's a fixed amount, mm-hmm. right? Either you have to find out, either you have to increase the plot ratio, which is the amount which determines the amount of net letable area that a read can can have, mm-hmm. or if not, you need to charge higher per square foot. So okay. this determine. Right. So either you risk press or you dissect more. Yes. <clears throat> so for moss, right? One of the things to take note is that because moss are uh, the tenants in malls are those kind of small businesses. Mm. So when there's a downtime, what I mean by downtime is that, for example, there's a vacant vacant space, <coughs> right? Then the mall will have to deal, the mall really has to deal with more tenants. As compared to commercial, I deal with a few big clients. Mm. Okay. So there's a lot like, for, for, for malls, there'll be more smaller businesses. Yes. And because malls in Singapore, uh, I'm not sure in Australia, but in Singapore, it's becoming kind of like repli- uh, repetitive. So you do what I mean by repetitive is that you see a Uniqlo in Tiongwa Plaza, you see a Uniqlo in somewhere else, Suntec City, you see a Uniqlo in somewhere else. So I'm finding, why am I looking at this point is that whether does it create so-called like a, like a mode. So for malls, right, there isn't really a mode. Uh. Mm. Correct. Yeah. So then I won't look into malls. But if you want to look into malls, then you have to go and think out. Okay, what if I go to this mall and this mall? Is there any difference? If there's no difference, right? Never mind. It's okay. So maybe at the at that factor or that uh, criteria, right? Maybe is the it score zero lah, mm. because it's almost the same as every other mall. Because Australia could be different lah. Mm. Oh, he's looking to invest in Singapore. Yeah. Right? So yes. in Singapore, if the malls that he intends to invest, right, is all almost the same, right? Then it's a replica of each other. Yeah, it's a replica of each other. So then it depends on what kind of, uh, maybe you need to go to AGM and ask the mall, the read manager and say, okay, so what's going to be different from this mall and that mall? Okay. What about traffic volume? Ah, so traffic volume. It's a strategic location. Ah, yeah, if it's a strategic location. So that's the, so that's the second part also, strategic location. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if it's Singapore, right? Singapore everywhere going to have Look, uh, transport. Yeah. So it's like, if, so in the end, it becomes like... It becomes more perfectly competitive. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if having more amenities th- doesn't necessarily build uh, the so-called mode of a more read. Mm. But if I have a commercial, commercial read, right? But if I know that I can anchor, I can anchor this tenant, who has a very huge, maybe he needs to occupy 25, 25 floors and it's a big tenant, right? Of course, yes, the, the concentration risk is high. But it, while there's a concentration risk high, right, it is also not easy for that 25, the, the tenant that occupies 25 levels, right, they won't easily find another office they can. Feed the 25 people, 25 level. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so commercial is just a few big customer. Yes. <clears throat> That's how I see it. how I agree with comparison because because right now I'm invest in commercial ma. <clears throat> so for <clears throat> malls, so that's on revenue. Revenue they need to think not of the downtime because during downtime there's no revenue no rental revenue. Mm. Right? And these tenants are smaller businesses. Yes, of course there's less concentration risk, but it means that the read manager must be very on the ball to make sure <clears throat> that the traffic flow is uh, there's traffic flow so that uh, there's business for all these small tenants but whereas the commercial read the read manager just needs to make sure that oh, there's just one am- transport amen- uh, amenities available now there like MRT then it's for the workers of that particular tenant just to be able to go down there they don't have to worry so much uh. mm. so that's why more reads they always have the so kind of this kind of all these kind of campaigns carnivals mm. is to attract people but, you don't, but for commercial, you don't have to do that. Okay. Yeah. So then for the cost, next cost is the, next item is the cost, right? Is normally is the interest rate. Uh. Mm. Okay. So, so interest rate will affect uh, the rental property, you right? Uh, yeah. And also what is the, uh, what is the finance expense, uh, borrowing cost. Uh. Mm. So you affect the cost of borrowing. Yeah. Affect cost of borrowing. So, Okay. Right, because right. if the cost of borrowing is higher and 
it means that it puts pressure on the read manager to uh, generate a higher yield mm. also known as this called In, this interest spread, uh. interest spreads uh. mm. so it's like you're playing that game uh, you're playing or if my cost of borrowing 2% then uh, property yield is 5% then I'm, uh, the read manager or the read is earning the, the differential uh, which is 3% uh. mm. so if that's the case right then would it make sense to look at overseas prop overseas uh, malls right where maybe the cost of borrowing is even way is way cheaper than in yeah, Singapore. I would say Japan is a very low cost of borrowing. Yeah, so he has to go and if he wants to go into malls, in fact actually he wanna to go to any rate, I think he, he, we have to look at this whole game mm. If but if he has decided that he wants a like have a margin of safety, be able to touch the brake, then look at Singapore. Mm. So that's mm. the that's the ex, uh, expense. Then the next thing is that uh, there's this item la, called the uh, joint venture. Mm -hmm. So recently, uh, uh, Capital Commercial Trust da does this. La. No, Suntec City also does this. One, uh, one third joint venture to do. <coughs> there's one building down there. Previously, it was at the Lobby Court. La, or Lobby Court there. Park more. Mm -hmm. And also, some REITs they have joint ventures. Ma. Mm -hmm. So these joint ventures. They reduce the risk. So joint venture by different risks, uh. Yeah, reduce the different risks, uh. Because if I and so it's lower cost also, right? Yeah. Because they, they split up the cost, uh. Yeah. Lower risk and cost. Hmm. No, I'm not sure if all malls have all all more reads have such a so called joint venture, but so what was, what's the take for this joint venture? So they will split the net, uh, rental property income. Hmm. Everything. Okay. So they will see at like, this part. Of so it's like you have hundred percent capital, yeah. but instead of everything into one property but now you can say okay can i find uh, i can find three partners and have 30 percent capital for partner a 30 percent of capital for partner b 30 percent of capital of partner c just that the net revenue come in there's just be three ways now. yeah so it's like if he wants an exposure mm. across the three partners right that it is available uh. okay. because this is this kind of joint venture i think is not uh it is not reflected directly in the in the top line revenue and the and the second line expenses it is not reflected interest right? it, uh, it is reflected as an item uh, distribution by joint ventures okay. and that in ultimately impacts the amount of dividends that the mm. the uni holder gets uh. okay because you add in right mm. distributed by joint ventures mm. distributed by joint ventures Okay, then that's for the income statement side of mm. uh, REITs, right? Mm. You know, what about the balance sheets, uh, like net asset value and stuff? Though? Currently, I don't you don't look at that. I don't, I don't <coughs> look at that. I just need to, I just think you know, that for all REITs to continue its operations, mm -hmm. one key <coughs> thing, it must be able to refinance. Mm, ability to refinance. Yeah, ability to refinance. So, ability to refinance is what? They must be able to value it again. Mm. Or what? When the borrowing, because the REIT needs to distribute ninety percent of uh ninety percent of income, right? This is for Singapore, uh. mm -hmm. But if it's looking at other REITs, then it's different, different. jurisdiction, ju different laws in place already. So in Singapore, because only ninety percent, it means that the REIT only can keep this ten percent and use it to, to fund, invest, right? uh, to fund organic growth or fund property acquisition. Mm. So the ability to refinance means that it must be like a dating game, lah. So the REIT is like a lead, it's like a it's like a guy. Then all the people who can finance are the ladies. So the guy has to like be attractive to this people to the ladies who's going to finance him. So meaning that if the REIT is not attractive, maybe due to whatever properties that's in the existing portfolio is not attractive enough or the valuations or the bankers find that the valuations are it's not what they expected, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's very hard to it's very hard to continue to um, have, a, have a good bargain. Yeah, because if you don't have this refinancing, I believe what the REIT needs to do is that you need to sell away this whole property again. Because they have to divest some part of the asset. Mm. Okay. Understood. So that's on the that's on the balance sheet, lah. So you so you look into the uh, asset of the let's see what asset class are, is the reholding. Mm. By read, 
Really? Really? Is it attractive now? Hmm. Okay. Actually, the one. Yeah, normally I just look at the borrowing. Then see whether is it due soon. Yeah, whether is the it majority due? of the debt. Yeah, man, is the debt due soon? So check the debt. Which majority. is the current uh, current debt, ma. Right. Okay. Because it impact the cash flow, right? Mm. When the number the, the the debt is going to due in one year, then the year came, they have to pay back the debt. So what I normally observe in the cash flow statement is that the financing activities, if the debt is due, they have to return. Then they return, they also have to, then there will also be new debt coming in. Then they will borrow again for a long term one. Yes. Uh, debt due to zero nine. Then after that, they pay back. They will have another debt due to zero two three. Yeah. But however, what happens if this debt doesn't come in? Yeah, if, if what if the refinancing doesn't come in, what happens? My my hunch is just that will they raise from they can't they can't hold they can't hold they won't be able to hold. Okay, it's just like why I have a property. Right. I buy also oh, I will take a loan from HDB ma. So if I can't service the loan, what will happen? What will happen is if I can't service the loan. I think there's two. I, I think return the HDB. This one I'm not quite sure. Right. Okay. This one I'm not quite sure. But so I think some. I think maybe you have to because it's like HDB selling the house to you, but if I buy a pro private property. Okay. If you can't, if means that you default on one of the loan. Ah, unless ah, uh, unless it is the bank ah. Uh, okay, so if I give me uh, one million loan. I think what happens is that the bank will pay the property developer one million, but after that it start charging interest, charging uh charging the principal and interest. Uh, principal and interest on Minan. Minan has to pay up. If Minan Correct. can't pay up, because the bank already has given the property developer one million, right? They can take back the property. Yeah, then I think the bank has to take back the property. So okay. probably it could be that in the read, the the property developer, the bank, the read. The property developer already say okay can they build they build the for read for the read so but the read must have money to pay the property developer ma so yeah. I guess the bank has to come the, the, the read has to place, yeah intermediate intermediary to get the money to pass the money to the read so that the read can pass the whole payment to the no I guess no I think it's the bank that passes the money to the you see the bank pay, pay, pay the property money, money, money. Yeah. The bank pays the property developer the money. And they charge you the then they money. charge the read the yeah. interest. If they can't pay up, if the read can't pay up, can they divest a part of their property yeah. asset? Which means the the asset you have to sell off. Uh. Yeah, I have to sell off. Uh. And then it means that the bank will want the money back. Uh. Yeah. So that means maybe have to if they so if the read can't pay the bank, the bank have to ask for maybe ask for the for the asset lah. That's why I think there's a there's this item called the encumbered assets versus unencumbered assets. There's this particular term lah. Okay, I understood. I saw a girl with me lah. So basically on whether they are able to to pay pay the debt lah. Mm. So I think somewhere because there's no free lunch lah, someone must have made the full payment first. Correct. So if the property developer has made the full payment for developing the whole property, right, they will want the money. So if the REIT wants this property, either the REIT got to go and raise funds from the uh, unit holders or they raise funds from private placement or, or, they, from, or they finance from bank. Yeah, finance from bank. But let's see if they can't pay, can they, let's say they can't pay the bank, can they finance from shareholder? Can, uh, but it takes, it takes quite a long time. Okay. Why long time is that? You still need to go and poll whether the unit holders want to participate. Then there's all this lead but then time. Maybe they redo the area. Mm. That's why the AGM got this. That's why in the AGM they always ask. Uh, they authorize the read manager to issue units. If there is an if there's a growth opportunity, uh, which is one of, which is always one of the resolutions in the AGM. So you can rather vote yes or no. Okay. So now here comes the. This part is more technical part. Mm. So the technical part is 
let's uh, uh more of buying selling shares of REITs. Yes. So let's say if I were to buy capital then more trusted C thirty eight U. Okay. Uh, so I was talking to my friend just now, so the price is two sixty six, right? Yeah. If I were to buy uh thousand shares that would be two six six zero. Right? And then K here that would be twenty five dollar, that would be mm. two six eight five, right? Mm. Two uh sorry. 2685 so effectively my cost per share is 269 la. mm, okay. like 2685 right uh -huh. so uh, what I understand like from even for REITs or buying stocks the, the one thing that you want is the commission to be low like you don't want it to be affecting your buying price much means if, if you want to oh. buy you want to buy it in larger sum oh okay right so I told, I told him or actually in fact any graduates is uh, one percent would be okay. So actually, twenty five dollar you buy thousand thousand shares is about one one percent Okay. So next thing is he's uh like this person is more trouble. Am I going to do? Let's say I have ten thousand, right? Am I going to buy ten thousand divide by current two dollars sixty six? Then buy five times. Yeah. Like, four, or, or like the option A is buy one shot lah. Means uh. this year by this and I get X number of shares. Mm. Or I I do I do a buy yearly. Thing or you know, buy basically buy quarter or something like that. Oh. I invest five k, yeah, invest five k. Means it means that uh, yeah. How we we affect much? Which is more recommended? Like uh, we. Oh, uh, current currently what I do is that every time I hit five thousand, I buy. Means every time you have five thousand cash flow, then you buy. Yeah, because <laughs> I assume that it's just like he's a, NS right. Right, uh, NS commando officer. Commando officer, right? Means there's an active income, right? Correct, and and got float lah, got scholarship for for school. Also. So if he does that, so he can deploy two methods lah, up to him. Okay, because he's more concerned if the price like he do want the commission to be like keep buying 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 then got commission in green place so he might as well just chuck the money in. Oh, it's up to him lah. Right. Doesn't affect much, right? Doesn't affect much lah. Okay, but but unless he's unless he's going to buy uh. Buy and sell, buy and sell, then that your fact. The next thing is the money he buy is deducted through his gyro mark, right? Let's say he's using KN, like uh, our partner here. So you'll be using his cash deducted from gyro to KN, uh. right? So the the dividend, no, the shares will be locked in his CDP. Yes. So the dividend come in will go into his CDP account or to his bank? Bank account. So it's like his bank, not CDP. No. Okay. So let's because see. right now the direct credit scheme uh, I think there's no more th there's one way to get checked uh, is that you go and cut off the bank uh, as in you connect already right uh, then suddenly you go and close down the bank but you don't tell you'll be gay uh. then, then how? Uh, then th th that's, the, that's the big question mark which I also do not know <laughs> okay so let's say you don't uh. okay, so, uh, next, so the thing will be let's say you have uh, so now you have a bank then mm. you have a CDP mm. and you have a brokerage account mm. So when you you transfer money here to buy shares, the shares will be locked up here. Yeah. Right. And then when dividend come here, come dividend paying. So the dividend will pay directly here. Yeah. Okay. Understood. So actually, it's come through the CDP. Yeah. Then through like. So it's like that, and then like that. Ah. Uh, okay. Then you. No. The company go directly to here. The the buying of shares lah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The. Uh, this is the CDP team. Ah. This is CDP team. So let me. Okay, so this is bank, this is CDP, this is brokerage firm, brokerage platform. Uh -huh. So back, first thing is you you uh, you want to buy you want to buy so this is money that goes out and yeah. these are the shares that come in. Yeah. Then the dividend goes here. The the company there's the company right. You find out who is the shareholder. Okay. Then, then you pay out from CDP. So actually the, the company will pay directly to the bank So la. this is the read lah basically. Mm. They really will find out who's the shareholder. Then they oh, pay then they straight away pay here. Yeah, because they have your data. Mm. Okay, okay. So this is the picture. Then let's see. Will your CDB account be ever have cash inside? No, it's, it's just, just a shares. share registrar only. Okay. Share registrar just, uh, just documents who is the shareholder, as that every day. That means every day. Okay, I have this shareholder, this day. But does it charge anything? No. Any, any oh, okay, the see the which is the stock exchange, ah, uh? SGX. Mm. So they will charge what? The charge a transaction fee, ah, uh? which is the twenty five dollar that one. Uh? They tell you the closing, uh, the the. I thought that's the bookage fee. Ah, uh, 
must include on top of the brokerage fee, right? There is a okay. So you pay you you buy money. There will be a twenty five dollar charge uh, because of on top uh, of it, there is this transaction fee, closing fee. Over here, la. Yeah. So this twenty five dollar, and here there will be one more charge. Yeah. Of of how much? Very cheap. I think very cheap, la. Okay, so it's very cheap. It's like if you, I think if I invest five thousand, I think the the charge is only like twenty cents. Oh, so it's that cheap. Okay. Or not one dollar, two dollar. Eh. Okay. Okay, so, so it's cheap up. Then next thing is when you sell away the share, right? You you go back in this reverse direction. The shares you sell through this platform. Yes. So will there be a charge here as yes. well? Yes. So there'll be another way charge uh, yes. of the cheap money. Yes. Then after that there'll also be this twenty five dollar charge. Again. Yes. And then the money will be go, go credited back. back to here. Yes. Okay. That's, then after that, the next time here oh, come the wait. Yeah. The money may still remain The money may still remain at the brokerage unless you explicitly tell the brokerage platform back to the bank account. Bank to the bank account. Okay. Okay, but then from brokerage to bank account, there's no charges, right? No. Okay, understood. So they might keep the food, right? Mm. Okay. Then, but then there comes the dividend date again, and you check, hey, you're not a shareholder anymore. Uh, then, then we will not pass you this money. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Then for next thing is uh I uh there's this I believe I think I asked you before maybe last year is about this in uh plowback reinvest yeah reinvest uh, dividend reinvest scheme is it uh, DRS something like I that think, uh, okay dividend re reinvestment scheme uh, instead of you getting the dividend as cash value. Oh, the script dividend ah. I'm not sure. Basically, the dividend here, then after they, this dividend, they allow you to buy more shares instead of you them giving you the dividend. Oh yeah, script dividend ah. I think it's script dividend. So, how does that work? Apparently, so if I get $500 dividend, yeah. the company will need to ask the shareholder, do you want it to be, do you want to receive cash or shares? Well, is it, is it going to ask like first time or is it every time? Every you, time. Every time, okay. Okay, but... There is, uh, I think there's some paperwork involved. Then now the next question is that, I got five hundred dollar dividend, right? How does it determine how many shares I get, right? It's I think price, it's right? there's a, uh, in the script document it would say, what is the transact, what is the conversion price price value? Oh, yes. Then you have to decide whether you want to do it. Or not. Yes, but often the only, uh, the only cost saving is that. You save that twenty five dollar because it is like you bypass the brokerage house and the stock exchange, ma, which charges means the risk will show you uh, do this. Uh, correct. So it bypasses this twenty five dollar and this small little cheap charge. Okay. So there's no I think that unless the read says, "Well, I give you a very ridiculous price, lah." Maybe it's like it's way way above your buy price. Uh, so market price maybe say two two sixty six right now right yeah. maybe he says two dollar. Okay, then let's go. Right? Yeah. So it de then it de determines what, but maybe different investors may want the money for different things lah. But okay, okay. if you decide to reinvest them, if you don't Wait, mind, what will happen that they they tell you is, it will definitely not be more than mark mark the market lah. Means they will not charge you more than. Sure not la. If not, it won't make sense already. It won't make sense, right? Yeah, it won't uh, make sense already. So you charge more than the market, then the the shareholder may say, no, never mind. I go and create. Uh, then I take the money. Then I go to the open market to buy ma. Right. Let's say, okay. Let's say it, but usually more often not. It's either market price or slightly lower than market price. Yeah. Then in that case, right, the scenario will be let's say you bought C thirty eight U, mm. way back. Mm. When it's two dollar, mm. right? So your buy effective buy price was two dollar mm. per share, uh. and then now it's two dollar sixty six, and in between, right? Let's say the price was at two thirty, uh. you decided to opt in for that scheme. Mm. So it, that scheme then they offer at market price two thirty. So mm. it will push up your buy price. Yes, uh, you push up buy price. Right? Yeah, like you because you for, your, for your own effect for your own tracking, uh, Yes, like, because it push, pushes up. Uh. Yeah, because now they two two dollar. Then you 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 keep opting in at a higher price, which is the market price back then. Uh. then after that you keep pushing up like two ten, two twenty, two thirty. Yeah, then your average buying price goes up. Uh. Then after that, when two thirty go to two sixty six, also you keep pushing up to two sixty. Yeah. Means probably from two dollar in two thousand ten to ten years later, your buy price two dollar could have become two thirty now. Yeah, but just that you have a lot more shares. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then your U on cost will not be as high as well. 
Yeah. Okay. Because it's two dollar you on cost versus two thirty you on cost. So that's why I always yeah. got to determine or understand what's the dividend you that your friend wants, lah. Okay. So for example, right now, or uh, Capital Com, only can think only give four point one. Based on the current buying price, I think it's two dollar, two dollar, two sixteen, lah. So I look, I analyze the dividend. It's like only eight cents divided by current price, only four. Then of course there's opportunity cost, ma. If I use that two dollar, but I, instead I go and buy Suntech Reed, maybe it give me five percent. Mm. Then the, uh, your friend have to weigh up. So now right now I'm facing, I, I'm at this crossroad, la, So uh, you have to decide. Yeah, I have to decide, la, Whether yeah. I want to buy uh Suntech or or should I continue to put the money back in Capital Com? But for your example, because you've been buying Reed since two uh MIP. Mm. So the what is your highest view of cost the 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 REIT that you bought for? I think six ah. Six percent. So is it a premium REIT? Means like the very famous. Ah uh, yeah. It's capital commercial. Ah, uh, I think the the, right? the only reason suddenly it went up crazily is because of the the merger la, the merger of the what ascenders and and the capital capital land is it? Some there was some there was some merger going on, so they suddenly think crazy. But, sure, la, but after that, right now. Then yesterday when I went to read the read the news, then apparently they go and buy another building in Germany, Frankfurt again. Oh wow. Okay. So the acquisition was very uh, rapid. Uh, uh, very rapid. Uh. So in this case more rapid as well. Uh, so mm. like, okay. So because let's say the read pack pack the dividend yield to four five percent. I'm not very sure. Ninety percent of distributor income. So back let's say back in 2010, you bought a uh, commercial at 150, uh-huh. right? So the, back then, the dividend you they offer you is 4%, right? Then as the year 10, 10 years go by, the price is slow and steady appreciation, right? Then you hit 180 mm. in between. Mm. Then after that, based on 180, the dividend per unit is also 4%. Mm. But your yield on cost is really more than 4%, right? Mm. And then now here come today, you say it's 216 or two, uh. let's say 220. Uh. And, and then next dividend, Announcement is also four plus four by four percent the one uh. that you just, but then based on this you are telling me uh Laura I just asked you you say you yeah, have six percent oh, okay, okay. but in between in between you bought right in between I still buy in between you bought uh oh so you you did buy up the share price as well mm, mm, did buy until now lah then it's like okay can now if it's I reach I uh, I set at a maximum of four percent I cannot go any lower than that. Yeah, stop one. Yeah, minimum of four percent. Mm, minimum of four percent. What uh the reason is because be about. Oh, okay. But what makes you want to buy up the share price? Means means averaging up your price. Is it? Oh, because the if, because if not if if don't buy right, of course two options are either you store the money and really I and we really wait for wait for market big uh market correction, or there's also opportunity for cost of leaving the money uh, idle la. so that's why uh, your friend right they come down to portfolio management la. Mm-hmm. is he okay that he can leave bulk of the money idle he doesn't mind <coughs> and he doesn't want that <laughs> he doesn't want that right if yeah. he doesn't want that then he need to he need to uh, he need to allocate the capital at uh, different intervals la. that's what I feel because sometimes yeah. you never means enter in tranches. Uh. Enter in tranches, maybe like uh, <coughs> maybe you say if you got so for example you got three hundred thousand, so then maybe you enter at uh maybe fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand at different times. Uh. Mm. But is there a criteria for that? In no, enter, it depends on what what is dividend you that you want. Uh. of course people will say as uh it, as high as you want. Then okay, then I'll turn the question around and say so what's the mean uh, lowest dividend that you can accept? Okay. So then you just keep. Then he just keep buying on so oh, until uh, until that he cannot he cannot lower he, than that. Ah, uh, then he say then then stop ma. Okay, then is would you recommend diversifying in REITs or not? Let's say a class a specific class of REITs. my my commercial class? then healthcare and then industry or let's say. You 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 okay? You are okay with just all commercial. Then after commercial, it's so you buy. You buy uh, the two two schools of thought lah. Yep. If you want to diversify, can then uh, I have to invest more time to deepen the circle of competence in each industry lah. Right. But the style I'm doing right now is that I'm going in deeper, 
not as just... not as broad but deep. Yeah, okay. not as broad but deep, so that I understand the whole uh inner inner mechanics of how the whole commercial works. commercial read works are. So actually depends on your different style. Of different style uh, So your friend has to be very clear that okay. So since it's a good thing that he decided that he wants, uh, he wants a he wants a so called not say totally risk free but he just wants a more much more stable uh, investment tool right then okay then you go to reads then now in the reads then you know he got five different types so you need to find out okay uh, what is he comfortable with mm -hmm. maybe due to the macro macro factors that mm -hmm. it boil down to okay macro factors really then determine uh, industry then industry then after you need to look at the the, the players in uh, in between all. Uh, within that within that category la. Mm. so so is there is, is it there's no one fit all is it there isn't really one fit all but if he's if he has to really have one fit okay la, there's really no one fit all mm -hmm. he has to dep dep he has to figure out his own portfolio management thing yeah okay but definitely the key assumption is that I assume that he has active income la, which he has la. yeah he has la. yeah, yeah. So, okay, understood. Yeah, so okay. that's basically how the how the read framework is law. Okay, thank you, Minai. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Done.